Hi, I'm Tony Allen Bernier, and this video is going to show you how to make a bike bag that sits in the center of your bike frame. The zipper cover I'll be sewing on my sewing machine here, but you can just glue that. And there's a different version that you can also do if you watch my hummingbird purse video. And I'll show you how to do that, and that one's sewn by hand as well. But before we get started, big thanks to the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal for sponsoring my channel. Great publication. They do a ton for the leather crafting community. I suggest checking them out. So I do zipper covers in a few of my videos, and this is just gonna be another different way to do it. So if you wanna do it like this, you can, or you can check out my hummingbird purse video and do the zipper covers like that. You can skip these all together as well. But this time I'm gonna sew them on a sewing machine. And just to simplify things, I'll put some tape on here so that it'll hold that seam nice and straight and have a good fold in there. But before I peel that, I'm going to get the fold made where I want it. And you want to make sure you're folding it back far enough so that when you sew it to your zipper, it will catch the leather and the zipper itself. And we're going to sew one of these to each side and it'll be a nice little zipper cover. So I just like to get the fold in there pretty good first. So you can peel that backing off and give it a good press. And I usually kind of just get it lined up and don't really press down too hard at first because you can always peel it up a little and then get it pressed down real good. You can sew one of these on at a time and you'll want to peel that zipper back a little bit so you're not fighting it right on that spot there. And you're basically going to want this flush with that inside teeth part of that zipper. you're going to want to go past where it's going to be sewn to the bag a little bit just make sure you have enough and this really comes in handy too if your zippers are too narrow for what you're going to be sewing these to you sew these on and you'll get that little bit of extra width to help out so you have a couple options when i'm doing my upholstery i sew pretty close to the zipper because those stitches are going to show regardless now since this is going on some veg tan i could keep that seam back so that you won't see this stitch. They do make zipper feet for your sewing machine too. So you can just kind of look underneath. Make sure you're hitting both layers. And then once you get close to the zipper, you might have to lift the presser foot up a little bit, but make sure the needle's down in there. Be gentle, you don't want to force anything. And just get it past that point again. And same as before, you want to go on the edge of the side, the teeth on the side that you're sewing on, you want to go to the edge of those teeth still. And there is a way to do this, if you watch that purse video, the hummingbird purse video, there's a way to do this just by hand if you don't have a sewing machine. It's a little bit different, but it still looks real nice. You can see this zipper's quite a bit longer than I need. I'm just gonna leave it until I'm ready to go. And at this point, you kinda wanna lift this other side up out of the way before you sew this side on, because you wanna line it up with the edge of the zipper teeth on this side now and they will kind of have like an overlap a little bit, but that way they kind of press into each other. So just kind of pull them out of the way a little to make sure you get right on the edge of these other side. Once you get close to that zipper pull again, you're going to want to get it out of the way. So drop the needle down in there and be gentle. Don't try to force this past here. If it's stuck, try to figure out what it's sticking on. Just get it out of the way. And 
now you can see how that will cover up the zipper. So on the side where it stays open, I put a stitch across there just to kind of help hold it so it looks a little bit better when I, when I get it in here. So it's gonna be something like that. And I usually go a little bit long so I can always trim it afterwards. You can see this side's a bit long so after I get it sewn in there well, I'll trim that excess off just past that stitch line for the next part. If you don't sew these on a sewing machine, you can still make these parts and glue them or double stick tape them to here. The only time it's going to be an issue is if you're using a thinner zipper because then it's not going to catch those holes for the next layer enough. And since I have plenty of extra width on this part, I'll go just next to the stitching holes. That way I don't have to try to get the needle through this as much. And the needle can get a little gummy, but this works just fine. And I will say too, if you're using oil dye, a little bit's probably not a huge deal, but if you put a lot of coats of oil dye into something, and if you're dyeing the side of it where you're putting this tape, that oil dye reacts with this tape. It will make it really gummy. It'll almost liquefy it to an extent. I like to get this a good press before I put the zipper on here. You can see I folded the tape, but once you peel this backing off, this tape is really thin, so it's not going to be a big deal at all. I'll zip it all the way closed, but I'll take this little chain and kind of put it in there like that, just so I don't have to try to fight it while I'm lining things up. And I like the zipper to be closed when it's on this side. Just line it up as best you can. Make sure you're getting enough off of the edge so it'll catch plenty of that. Let's get it good and straight. And I'll wait and trim that excess off after I sew this down. I got the zipper all on there. I'm going to want to get this excess off of here. You want to leave just a little bit extra so when that boxing comes around you won't have any issues because it's real thick right there. Before I sew the boxing to the two panels I like to sew all of these on first. And you can see when you're sewing these the very last hole right at the point is pretty easy to distinguish and that's where I, I start and I'll take both the needles and I put them in that last hole. You can just place it in here, put it in your stitching pony. So I have it in that center hole and you just find that center hole right on the point there. Once I get to the point where you can see the hole is half punched on that edge, that's where I'll butt these two sides up together and continue on here. So the next step will be to sew the gusset onto these side panels. And the pattern is marked so you can mark the hole that you're gonna want this seam to be on. And I have it mirror imaged on both sides so it doesn't matter if you sew it on this way or this way. As long as that seam is right on that marked hole. So what I'll do is just line it up and like start on that next hole right next to it. But a little bit of water on the edge might help that compress so you can get around the corner. Another thing you can do is kinda of preform that corner, kinda of work it in a little bit. But these are a pretty big radius, so it shouldn't be too much trouble at all. And just work your way around. Sometimes it helps to just go through one layer at a time. 
I go through the gusset separately. One thing I like to do when I'm kind of coming through the layers, instead of just pulling this and pulling it like that, I'll put a finger in front of it so it's pulling it straight out from that hole so it doesn't grab and mess the look of that hole up at all. By having the hole punch on the back part, it makes it a lot easier to find these holes. And if you need help, you can go through the front and follow it back. I got the gusset around the first side. And what I'll do for the second side is start on that same spot since I have that hole marked. I can make sure we get them aligned just perfect. And I'll go around as far as I can before I start going through the zipper to get in there. So what I did is I just grabbed my other stitching pony, just laid it on its side, and then instead of starting on the hole that's marked for this seam, I'll be starting on the very next hole. That way the thread doesn't like pop out and make it even more difficult for me to get this started here. Once you get far enough, you take that stitching pony off and throw some weight in there. That helps you from having to fight this quite as much. Just keep an eye on the inside. Make sure you're going through both layers. It's not getting stuck up on anything. So I already opened up the zipper just to create a little bit more slack while I'm maneuvering stuff around. And this is another point where you're going to want weight in here. Otherwise, trying to get your hand in and out, you're going to be fighting this. But I usually will just go until it's too difficult to get in there, then I'll start going through the zipper. Give me a good idea to check every once in a while, make sure you're hitting both layers. panels are sewn on. Sometimes it helps just to get that fold worked in there a little bit so it looks cleaner. The last thing you're going to need to do is the straps. If you want to mount this forward on your bike or back towards the seat, there is mounting spots on all the sides. I just put all of them on this one so it can be put wherever. But if you're sure it will be back by the seat, you won't need these two bottom ones because you'll just need the top and the back to mount it back towards the seat or vice versa. You won't need this back one if you mount it up towards the handlebars. Before you do your belts, make sure you give them a spray or something back here or when you seal them, get a bend going. Otherwise, it's going to start to crack right here when you try to force a bend in there. That's going to weaken that spot. And I'll always set my buckle down, make sure I have it the correct way before I start putting it on. Give it another check even. And what I'll do is I'll start on this corner, just work my way all the way around 
And then once I get to that corner again, I'll back stitch all the way to the other side. I just put a couple needles through there so it was all lined up before I put it in the clamp. You just need to make sure your buckle's out of the way so you don't start sewing around it. Backstitch all the way back to that corner.